There are five crucial decisions that determine his capacity to love you healthily, committedly, and passionately. But most people have no idea what they are. When you understand them, your ability to forecast your future with him grows exponentially. When you don't, you end up playing a risky and often painful game of Russian roulette. So in today's video, I'm going to reveal the five hidden decisions that make or break your ability to be loved truly by him. If I were to share one virtue you need to seek in a man above all others, granted kindness and compassion are top of the list, is self-awareness. Why? Because when a man is self-aware, he's able to make decisions much more powerfully and understand himself his past, his present, and most of all, his future. Now, the decisions that I'm about to share with you right now are part of what I call the 5% of decisions in life. 5% rule says that 5% of the decisions in your life will create 95% of the greatness and happiness or 95% of the misery in your life. So when you understand what these hidden decisions are, you're far more powerfully able to decipher and project what the future with a man will be like and look like. Now, there's gonna be three keys that are going to be needed for you to really grasp this understanding with them. One is depth, meaning you can't get to the depth of what I'm asking for right now with small talk and small chit chat and not sometimes powerful conversations that are not the most comfortable, but that definitely lend themselves to getting to know each other more deeply. The second one is vulnerability. Why? Because the things I'm about to share right now demand a high degree of self-expression, courageous expression that veer into the things that are scary to share about both of you. And the third thing you need to have in your quest to understand what these questions and decisions are is time. It's going to take time for you to go beyond having a powerful, fulfilling, in-depth, vulnerable conversation to recognize is the thing that was shared in the conversation actually what is showing up day in, day out through time in my connection. The first decision he subconsciously makes that will make or break his ability to love you powerfully is does he secretly fear abandonment or commitment? This goes back all the way to when he was early in life connecting to his caregivers, most likely parents. When you are a child, the way you connect, the way you're treated, the way you're nurtured, the way you're paid attention to marks in your nervous system a way of connecting with other human beings. And for most of us, there's three major attachment types. One is going to be healthy and secure which is the one most human beings seek to experience and express. Another one is going to be avoidant. Another one is going to be anxious. So depending upon what he went through in his childhood, he might have learned that in order to open himself up to neglect, his heart is consistently broken. So he's built up walls that prevent him from going deep into intimacy with other human beings because doing so means ultimately getting hurt. Some of the human beings have learned through chaotic experiences, maybe through some abuse, some combination of neglect, have learned to attach more quickly and powerfully. And by powerfully, I'm not talking about in a healthy way, in a more codependent way to other human beings. So there's a big fear of abandonment. That's more likely what happens with an anxious attachment type. So the way he learned to attach to other human beings unexamined can lead to a very fulfilling or a very painful experience of him. Why? Because if you're someone who is securely attached and you connect with someone who is still playing out his triggers from childhood of abandonment, he's going to ask more of you then you can give him. You're going to feel slightly asphyxiated. He's going to be more controlling. If he's someone who experienced the opposite and he seeks much more distance, the more you seek to connect with them, the more he'll push you away. Now, there's a big challenge. Many of the human beings who get recycled again and again and again typically are more of the avoidant type because those don't tend to last in relationships. So there's potentially a bigger pool of those guys available right now. And if you're unaware of what's going on, then you might give it your best and your all and then recognize when your heart is completely attached to them that they can't give you what you want. Second decision a guy makes that can make or break his ability to love you healthily 
is where does he go when he's scared or frustrated? And what I'm talking about is not where does he go physically, but where does he go in his heart? We all have a home that will feel comfortable when shit hits the fan. If he's someone who's learned to maybe fight when something like this happens, you can imagine that when relationship challenges arise, he might be the kind of person who's really pushing your buttons and fighting because it's his survival mechanism. If he's learned that he can't express his truth and he needs to be quiet, then he's going to maybe not share with you what's going on and maybe keep quiet to himself and retreat or flee from the situation. So understanding where somebody's natural reaction under heavy stress goes can do a lot to help you to forecast how things will go. Now, this is not to say that if he learned to fight, for example, growing up emotionally, that he's going to have to continue doing that for the rest of his life. That's why there's therapy. That's why there's introspection. That's why there's meditation. That's why there's coaching. Why? Because you can learn to slowly undo that triggered mechanism, way of being, and react differently. But unexamined, you can bet that whatever he has learned to do under high stress, he's going to continue repeating. So why is it so important to get to know someone for a longer period of time before you commit even to exclusivity? Because if you commit to exclusivity before a big challenge comes around, and now a big challenge happens when he's your boyfriend, you might be scared at the way he reacts at life or maybe pleasantly surprised in a good way. So taking a little time to get to know him under stress and having the capacity to have conversations around it will heavily dictate what the future with him could look like. The third decision that makes or breaks an amazing relationship with him is what has he decided life is about? In other words, has he figured out a purpose in his life. And a purpose doesn't have to be tied to his job or anything like that, but has he found out why he is here? Is there something bigger than himself that he's here to experience and express? If he hasn't found that out, let me tell you that the connection with him will feel far more stressful. Why? Because he's going to deeply be searching for that. In the search of that, you might be fourth or fifth on the list. If a man hasn't figured out what he's here for, he's going to be a lot less likely to give you something sustainable that you can hold on to. Now, before I share my last two decisions, which are really, really important to understand, if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet you're not fully aware of the true root cause why you're still single. So what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women in every walk of life you can imagine, every continent on earth. I'm talking hundreds of women who hadn't experienced the love they wanted. And after the coaching, finally able to create a long lasting relationship with someone that ended up in marriage or life partnership, I've created a quiz you can take with those learnings in about 60 seconds. And it will show you the number one reason you're still single. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description. You will see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions. And within 60 seconds, you'll have the answer to the question why you're still single. And a custom report It's going to share with you based on your specific blind spot, what's the number one thing you can do starting today to attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. The fourth decision that really matters if you want to create a long lasting relationship with someone and evaluate the possibilities, the potential with them is how does he talk to himself when he fails. The way he carries himself, the conversation he has internally, the way he lovingly or harshly or violently or even abusively talks to himself will determine his capacity to resolve conflict with you and his level of self-esteem. When you are the biggest tyrant to yourself, when you fail, that is the definition of low self-esteem. A man with low self-esteem can only love you so far. A man with a healthy level of self-esteem can love you far more deeply. The fifth decision he makes that can make or break a relationship is, does he seek mostly pleasure or mostly meaning from a relationship? There's going to be types of guys who are in it for themselves, for their pleasure, whether it's bodily pleasure, emotional pleasure, control, comfort, something of that nature. And there's gonna be men who are there because they want to evolve and grow and give and share and die with their heart fully self-expressed. Obviously, there's always gonna be a combination of both. There's no one who just is there to give and not receive. And there's no one who's there just to receive and not to give. The split of this mix, how much he's there for pleasure versus meaning will highly determine the quality of relationship you can expect from him. Now, I'm going to give you a bonus one. And that is, what is he willing to sacrifice for this relationship? Again, if he's someone who has the meaning more than pleasure, he's going to be willing to sacrifice. And let me tell you the truth. I know that relationships are give and take. 
I know there's going to be some compromise in a relationship. There will be also some sacrifice. There's going to be things you don't enjoy that you'll have to endure because the love is greater than the things that you're not necessarily enjoying. There's always going to be space for boundaries and for kindness and for asks and needs, but there's also going to be some healthy sacrifice in the midst of a relationship. And what he's willing to sacrifice, not just for himself or for you, but for the relationship will greatly matter and determine the kind and quality of relationship you can experience now. This is all fine and dandy, but I'm going to ask you to take it one more step because the things that I'm asking you right now to evaluate in terms of decisions the guy is making, I need you to do a U-turn and actually look at yourself as well. On the five, six areas that I shared right now, I need you to take a look as to how you make these decisions. What type of attachment do you have? How do you talk to yourself when you fail? What is life about for you? The more you are able to understand and be self-aware of what you bring to the table, you might need to work on a couple of these areas before being in the healthiest of relationships. And if you are able to work on these things, you'll be able to ask for more, you'll be able to accept less of what you don't want and know that you're doing it from the healthiest possible place. Hope this is helpful and useful. If it is, it would mean the world to me and my channel because this is how I grow and reach more women. If you click like and subscribe, if you'd like to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without any for gimmicks, manipulation, games or stupid techniques, Make sure to go to the next video right here.